<laughs> it is finally freaking here. V2 of my favorite five inch freestyle frame, the QAVS JB edition is finally freaking here and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Before we get into all the things that are new in V2 of this frame, I, I don't want to assume that everybody's watched the V1 release video and is like really familiar with what my design goals were when I worked with Lumineer to design this frame. And it's really important because like, in order to evaluate what a frame does, you kind of have to know what it's intended to do. If we compare this frame to something like the Rotoriot Tank or the Bot Grinder Demibot, these are super heavy, ultra durable frames designed to uh, not break at all costs. And that wasn't what I was going for. At the time that I developed this frame, I was very focused and still am, but I was very focused on weight. I had just built an 800 plus gram chonker of a five inch quad and was really dissatisfied with how it flew. And I, I admit that I kind of slingshotted the other direction and really tried to build the lightest quadcopter that still had acceptable durability for the kind of flying that I do. So my goal was to build a frame that came in around 110 or 115 grams with the end goal of having a final quadcopter around 700 grams including a GoPro, like a Hero 7, I think I was using at the time. And I hit that, I achieved that. With the V1 of this frame, you can build it out to 700 grams without taking any really extraordinary measures to lighten it and carry a GoPro. And I think that quadcopter flies just, Every time I flew a lightweight quadcopter, like a racing rig, I was like, oh my God, this flies so good. And I wanted to get some of that experience in a freestyle rig, but still be able to carry a GoPro and still be able to have reasonable durability. And I say reasonable durability because as you can see, the arms are five millimeters thick. They're not six millimeters or eight millimeters, they're five millimeters. And so if you take this frame to a concrete bando and you smash it into the wall a million times, it's gonna break an arm. That's just gonna happen. For the kind of flying that I usually do, it doesn't break very much. And when I do take it to a bando, I accept that perhaps it's gonna break, but I still love it. I still do what I'm gonna do. That's just not the kind of flying I do though on a daily basis. In a second, I'm gonna take this frame apart and show you one of the most innovative features that I think we've come up with in the V2. But first, I've gotta just treat this like a regular frame review and give you some basic information about the frame. Uh, the front of the quadcopter has spacing for either a 20 or a 30 millimeter flight controller. There are press nuts pre-installed in the kit uh, that hold the stack screws in, and that's a good thing because having press nuts or you can just install an M3 nut at the base of the stack really makes the gyro data cleaner. This is something that Chris Rosser, well, he, he didn't invent it, but he sort of solidified it in the modern mind. Uh, he calls it the golden nut at the bottom of the stack. In the rear, we've got mounting holes for either a 20 or a 25 millimeter accessory. Usually that's gonna be the video transmitter. The 20 millimeter holes are drilled to M3. Uh, and the thinking is that you can always just use a washer to size that up to M2, but it's hard to drill it out. The 25 millimeter holes are drilled to M2, largely because if we drilled M3, they would have been too close to the existing holes. And I suppose you could drill those out if you really wanted them, but I think most of the 25 millimeter stuff you're gonna be mounting is gonna use M2 hardware, whereas 20 millimeter stuff can go back and forth between M2 and M3. There is plenty of room in the back for something like the Cadex Vista or the O3. The HC0 Freestyle looks like it like theoretically would go between the standoffs, but not with really any room to spare. I wouldn't do it. And it would just hang the heck out over the bottom plate. If you did want to use this frame with the HD0 Freestyle, in my opinion, the right thing to do would be to mount it here in the center. It has 30 millimeter mounting and then get a 20 millimeter sized flight controller and ESC to put in the rear. Don't worry about mounting the flight controller away from the center of gravity. The gyro doesn't care. I've actually got a video about that. If you want to check it out, I'll link it in the video description below. And I don't have a fresh out of the box walk snail VTX, but just I'll grab this one off my bench just for testing sake and show the Walksnail VTX fits with plenty of room to spare. 
One of the differences between the JB QAVS and the original one is that we switched the standoffs from 27 millimeters to 22 millimeters to create a slam deck design. This has two advantages. The more centralized center of mass gives just a little bit better handling uh, and it saves a little bit of weight. Those standoffs have weight. The weight that we saved by reducing the standoff height, we traded for durability by making this front bottom plate be three millimeters instead of two and a half millimeters. Uh, and that gives a little more durability and front end collisions. One of the main driving factors in the design of the V2 frame was to support the O3 air unit camera. The dimensions of the O3 air unit camera are just a little bit different than the typical FPV cameras we use and many frames just wouldn't work with it. The QAVS V2 will fit the O3 camera uh, as well as any other camera, including the Vista camera, which was a real problem on the V1 because the Vista camera is about a half a millimeter wider, maybe even as much as a millimeter wider than a standard 19 millimeter camera. And that means that uh, the side plates on the V1 frame were sometimes really hard. They, they squeezed the Vista camera really tightly and were hard to get into the notches. That will not happen on the V2 and there are very various camera mounting points so you can mount your camera back or front however you need. One note about the front end, uh, these screws that you see here are not correct. There was a mistake in the manufacturing of this prototype. Uh, these are M2.5 screws. They're M3 screws in the final frame. And uh, do you see how they stick through here? That's too long, it's not like that. Uh, I just had to grab some M2.5 screws that I had sitting around in my shop to hold this together. Uh, but I didn't wanna wait for the final production one to make this video. V2 of the frame has a really interesting GoPro mount that I will never use, but some of you might. Uh, and the GoPro mount works like this. We take that screw out and we push this back and then it's, once it slides back it lifts out and you can see here how that sort of locks in and the idea is that you could have this plastic mount just ready to go easy to take off easy to change that's cool but I'm never going to use it because I don't like these adjustable mounts because as soon as you hit an obstacle then the camera angle changes and I just don't find it as secure as a 3D printed mount. By the way, there are a huge number of 3D printed accessories for the QAVS V1. They are all compatible with the QAVS V2 and I'll put a link to the Thingiverse uh, album where you can download and print those for yourself if uh, in the video description below. There are also QAVS accessories that can be purchased from Lumineer pre-printed uh, if that's the direction you prefer to go. Every time I review a frame, I complain about the fact that it doesn't have a grippy battery pad. Very few frames include grippy battery pad, like Umagrip is the canonical example. And that's important because a grippy battery pad helps prevent your battery from ejecting. Obviously, that's a good thing. Uh, I said to Lumineer, we can't ship my frame with a non-grippy battery pad after I spent the last two years complaining about everyone else's frame not having a grippy battery pad. And their reply was, well, number one, it's gonna make the frame more expensive. And number two, some people don't agree. Some people, Bardwell, think that grippy battery pads are overrated. And actually some people don't like them. So the compromise that we've come to is that the frame is going to come with a non-grippy battery pad, uh, but there will be a custom cut grippy battery pad that can be purchased separately if you feel like I do that grippy battery pads are important. I could have put my foot down, but I didn't want to make everyone pay for the grippy battery pad if they didn't want it. But then isn't that true for every other frame manufacturer whose frame I've reviewed and ripped a new one? for not having a grippy battery pad. Okay, I'll have this existential crisis off camera and move on with the review. <clears throat> now we come to the most exciting part of this frame. And in order to demonstrate it, I'm going to take this screw out with a 2.5 millimeter driver. I don't need to take it all the way out. I just need to loosen it. And you'll notice that when I do, the arms get a little wiggly. And then with a two millimeter driver, I can remove this screw. So this is a single screw arm change. And like on the V1, the arm is gonna come out 
just like so. So if you do break an arm, that's the process for replacing the arm. But I want to take this whole plate on and show you the novel way that we are holding the arms together. See, this is something that every frame designer has to deal with. How do you make the arms easy to change if they break an arm, but secure and not wiggly? And on the V1 of this frame, we held the arms in with a little wedge made of carbon fiber, but the wedge sometimes wore down or wasn't precisely machined, and the arms sometimes got a little wiggly, but we solved that. I think we solved it. That's right, we have replaced the carbon fiber X-plate with a milled aluminum X-plate. And that has two advantages. First of all, the carbon fiber X-plate would break a lot. Uh, you, the arm would take a hit, the arm would flex like this, it would stress against the X-plate, the X-plate would break. And then you had to take the entire bottom plate off to replace that X-plate. It was super annoying, it was a lot of screws to pull, and it happened all too often. Um, so this obviously is not going to break. Right, just clearly, it's aluminum. The other advantage is it lets us completely redesign how the arms get wedged in. And you can see here that I tighten this screw down, this metal aluminum piece wedges against the metal X plate and it screws in completely tight. This is not going to loosen up. And if it does, like if your arms get a little wiggly because you've been just crashing a lot and the arm has maybe worn down a little bit, you just get a screw and you crank that down another couple turns and it gets tight again. And it completely takes any issues with the carbon fiber milling process out of the equation of your arms being snug. This is amazing. This is like, I'm so happy with this. I always say when I'm reviewing other people's frames, most frames reuse a lot of ideas that have been invented in other frames. And there's fine, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. All I ask of a frame is that it do at least one original thing, one novel thing. And I feel like this frame 1000% fits that bill. I haven't seen I can't think of a single other frame that has an arm mounting mechanism like this. But there is a downside. Nothing comes for free. And the downside is, as always, weight. We have four arms, we have this, we have this, and we have the screws here. And we've got these screws, although technically these should be M3 screws, not M2.5, but whatever. And we're coming in at around at 126 grams. That's with the battery pad. So, you know, apples to apples, if you're comparing weights with other frames, make sure they also have a battery pad. Uh, I guess technically you could add the GoPro mount if you really want to, that's 131, but I wouldn't count that. Uh, just like I wouldn't count the weight of a 3D printed mount. We're coming in at just about 10 grams higher than the original JB QAVS which was around 115 grams. But I think that is a really fair trade to make. Um, the difference between say a 700 and a 710 gram frame is not going to be super noticeable in flight and the additional uh, durability and the additional security of the arms as well as the metal front end, which is also gonna add durability and have more flexible camera mounting, I think is a totally worthwhile trade-off. I'm super happy to put this, fr this uh, frame out here for you guys to buy. There's links in the video description below if you wanna pick it up. And yes, I know you're wondering, am I going to update my perfect freestyle build with this new frame? You better freaking believe it. That's coming. And we are also updating the uh, beginner build series for 2023. That's coming out on the channel as well very, very soon. Keep an eye for it. In fact, whenever it is out, I'll put cards on screen. But that might not be for a minute yet. See you there.